Hi, and welcome back to Of Course Business English. I'm Lauren, your Business English Coach. In our previous video, we looked at the present continuous tense, and I told you never to use stative verbs in the present continuous tense. In today's video, we are going to look at mixed verbs. What's a mixed verb? How does it look? And how do we use them? I'm also going to show you an example using a business meeting. So let's get started. Today, I want to show you three different kinds of verbs. As you know, we will be studying mixed verbs in more detail. Action verbs are the first type. We also get stative verbs. I discussed that in the previous video. And today we are going to look at mixed verbs. So the reason I want to show you this is that so that you don't get confused when you are using the present continuous tense. So should you add ing? Mm, or should you not add ing and keep it stative? Okay, here you can see our action verbs. Those are your verbs where you can imagine the movement in your mind. So when you close your eyes, you can imagine a person who runs or a person who works. So we can say run, we can say running. Stative or still verbs means we don't imagine movement in our mind. Action verbs, I can see movement, I can see a picture in my mind where the movement is happening. Now, mixed verbs, these are a bit different. We call it a mixed verb because if you can imagine a glass filled with water and filled with some form of cold drink, they are mixed. It's two in one glass and sometimes we are not sure how to distinguish between them. Let me give you some examples to clarify. Let's take two words, think and thinking. Now I want you to guess which one is stative and which one is an action verb. It depends on what you want to say. So, I'm going to give you an example of a sentence. If I say, he thinks the moon is beautiful. This form of think doesn't have movement. It's one thing that he believes. So this is used in the form of belief. Now we use thinking. He is thinking about his weekend activities. Here we can see the process of thinking. He can think, for example, 15 minutes long. Here you can see the difference clearly. We have a stative verb, thinks, and we have a continuous verb or action verb, thinking. Now, this is why mixed verbs are important to know. We get a certain amount of mixed verbs that you can study to make sure you know when to use it in a stative form and when to use it in an action form. All right, so these are some of your stative verbs. Dislike, fear, envy, deserve, belong, own, possess. Matter, understand, doubt, believe, know, recognize. We studied them in our previous video, so you're welcome to look at that again. So to help you understand the differences in meaning between a continuous verb, ing, and a stative verb with no ing, I'm going to go through this business meeting. So we will see the examples are underlined and I'm going to show you the differences in meaning. First, let's read through this business meeting. You can read along with me. You can also practice pronunciation. 
Okay, so Julia, Andy, Rico, these are the three people in our meeting today. Hi everyone, I hope you are having a good day so far. We are having this meeting because some team members appear to be confused about our monthly sales target. Sorry to interrupt, Julia, but do you have the meeting minutes or notes from our previous meeting? Unfortunately, Andy, I missed that meeting, so I'm feeling a bit confused today. Could you give me a brief overview of what was discussed so we could continue talking about our monthly sales target? Yes, sure. Tom went over, spoke about our sales profit last month and said that our profit margin looks dim or unfavorable. Have a look on page three to see the numbers. I don't see what you are referring to. Are you looking at the second graph? Oh, now I see. Sorry, I feel very tired today. No problem. Right, so to conclude, our profit margin is very small and henceforth, from now on, we need to take corrective actions to ensure a profit increase next month. Can we make sure we have a meeting every week to stay on track? I don't see a problem with that. We must talk about the new products we will receive from the supplier tomorrow. The new desks weigh a lot, so we will need extra hands to help carry them. Well, the desks can be heavier than me. I don't like weighing myself in the morning because the numbers keep going up. Sorry to hear that, Rico. Maybe try to eat some healthy snacks? I have tried, but they taste awful and smell very bad. I only like smelling flowers in my garden and tasting different countries as food. Could you get back to that later, please? I can see we are going off track. I am also missing some figures in the report which you gave me, Rico. Did you fill in all the information? Unfortunately, I did not because I usually miss Monday's meetings due to valuable client meetings. Alright, I understand. I'm having trouble with this screen share function. It isn't appearing on the screen but I'm hearing music playing in the background. I'm also not seeing my screen. It's off. Julia, please call IT and hear if they can send someone to come and assist us. I just phoned IT. There is a Wi-Fi problem, but Sam is looking into it or evaluating. All right, everyone, let's bring this meeting to an end. I am not thinking clearly at the moment. Yes, I agree. I don't think we should continue. Let's meet again at 3 p.m. In this meeting example, you will see all of these words included in the two circles. I also added think and thinking. So when we go through this document, you will be able to see how the words have a different meaning depending on if they are used in a stative form or in a continuous ING form. So we are going to start at the beginning and I'm going to show you some differences in meaning. Okay, I hope you're having a good day. So here we can see there is progress in time Let's say the day started at 8 a.m. So there is a movement through time and it continues until now when they're having the meeting. Then we have appear. Now some team members appear to be confused. So here we can see that it's used in the form of I think they are confused or they look confused. So there's no action taking place over a period of time. It's how they look, their state. 
For example, this bit. This bear appears big. This dog appears big. He is big. Next we see, do you have the meeting minutes? So this is used in the form of possession. Do you have, do you own, do you possess? Do you have the notes with you? It's a stative verb. Because I don't think about any movement. I missed that meeting so I am feeling a bit confused today. So from the start of the day until now, her feelings has continued. She is still feeling confused. She started to feel confused and it's continuing onwards in the day. So there's movement. Our profit margin looks dim. Now we can see that the margin is dim or looks dim. Its current status looks dim. So that is in a state of dimness. There's no progress or no movement. Are you looking at the second graph? Here we can see that this is an action. Looking. So there's progress in time. Andy can, or oh sorry, Julia can, for example, look at the document for 15 seconds. So we can see there is an action taking place. So here you can clearly see the difference between your stative verb and your continuous verb. They have the same base word, which is look, but the one shows meaning of action and the other shows meaning of status. Let's continue. The new desks weigh a lot. This is referring to the amount of weight. But here you can see, I don't like weighing myself. Here it's an action. Rico doesn't want to weigh himself in the morning. It's an action. I have tried, but they taste awful and smell very bad. Here you can see that we are referring to how it tastes and how it smells. But here below, we are referring to the action of putting it in your mouth and tasting it. An action. Let's go down again. I can see we are going off track. I'm also missing some figures. I can see. Here it means I can predict. I can see that it's headed towards the direction of going off topic in the meeting, predict. And here we can see missing. So it talks about the action of not finding the figures. He's not able to see the figures, it's missing. It is not here with him. Here you can see having, having trouble. So that's quite clear, right? This process of not figuring it out. It isn't appearing, it's not showing, it's not coming up, it's an action. I'm hearing, meaning your ears are active, you're hearing music. Here I'm also not seeing my screen, so your eyes are looking at something, it's an action. If we can quickly compare this to at, here at the top, I can see, predict, but here we see it's an action, physically seeing. Then Julia, please call IT and here if they can send someone. So this here is used in the form of find out if they can send someone. Then we have Sam is looking into it. So here it's also an action. He's evaluating. So it's an action taking place. I'm not thinking clearly at the moment. Another action taking place. And here I don't think. Here think is used in the form of his belief. So here again, you can see it clearly. State of form, I think or believe. We should continue 
next time. And here, thinking and action taking place at the moment. I hope this helped you today to understand the difference between the ING form, the continuous form and the state form. So please remember to subscribe, that way you can see more of my videos and make sure you keep your English learning on track. Oh, your phone just fell. Uh, so, as I was saying, remember to subscribe, like or comment. You can comment if you have a specific question you would like to ask me. And that way I can make a video about it to answer specific questions you're wondering about. Great! See you next time!